Welcome to another episode of Peers Over Beers, your favorite digital and social evangelist podcast with your industry veteran hosts, Chris Tetzel. This podcast starts now. Welcome to another Peers Over Beers. My name is Chris, Chris Detzel, and we do have a special guest today, Maria Agneva. Maria, how are you? I am so well. How are you? Doing well. It's been a long time since we've connected. It Seems. has been a long time. I think, yeah. you know, I don't know that we've really just had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, like, like this, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have. I, I think it's mostly in group. Yeah. On Slack, on Zooms, on uh, what was that thing called? Clubhouse? Yeah, for a bit, yeah. Are you still I on that? I have been there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? No, never. Um, it had potential, but, you know, I, I just got there's too much stuff going on. And I was like, I, I don't get it. You know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in this too much. So, um, well, hey, uh, so... You know, you went to another company several months ago, uh, I guess back in July or something like that, a company called Invoca. And, you know, we actually have um, a person in common that we know, but, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear more. You know, from my understanding, you know, you started, you're starting a community from scratch and there's a lot of things within that process. Is that right? You know, is, is that you're starting a community there and love to know a little bit more about that piece, you know, why community, what, what's kind of the goal and things like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you are correct. It was precisely last July when I started in Avoca. Um, actually, one of my um, old managers, well, not that she's old, but from a long time ago, <laughs> um, one of my previous bosses whom I um, absolutely adore um, has been at Invoca and uh, she reached out, you know, we chatted, you know, it's all, I feel like, you know, the longer you do the job and the more you, you, the more senior you get into your career, like all of the job referrals are primarily through your network. Like That's I cannot right. even tell you last time that like I went on a website and filled out an application. <laughs> it's all very much, you know, word of mouth. Right. And so typically people, that you work with in the past who like know your work and kind of what you're all about and the quality of your work uh, reach out. And so that this was no exception. So uh, yeah, we chatted. I was really impressed with the company and the caliber of the leadership team and all the people who were working there. I'm in the marketing department. So everyone I've met has been absolutely incredible and really impressive. And I was like, hey, this is a really cool space. Uh, we're in the conversation intelligence space, so we help sales and marketing teams and digital leaders understand their conversations with customers and um, and really transform their businesses that way. So it's a really exciting space, still early on. So being uh, in something that is growing quickly, that's going to be the future of digital is really exciting. Um, and then you know, you're building the category. And so when I learned that there's an opportunity for community, it made me think of, uh, you know, so, some other opportunities where um, I was able to come in really kind of as the category was starting up. Um, and what a fantastic thought leadership opportunity that gives uh, to community members, right? Mm -hmm. To like all the customers that are there sharing their tips and tricks. They're really uh, at the vanguard Right, they're blazing trails uh, when uh, they're learning something uh, so new and so transformational, and so I I love doing that. Right, like what draws me to community is um, the ability to help people uh, kind of find their voice, you know, learn more, get better, uh, and of course, learning in community is always better and much um, more multifaceted than if you just gonna read a book by yourself. Um, you always learn so much more from your peers, right? Like us yeah. in the community it's... space, like we came in, like there were no books, <laughs> no, no classes. <laughs> we just kind of learned by doing yeah. and by talking to each yeah. other, right? And it's it's similar, right? And it just um, allowing people to really um, kind of uh, turbo turbocharge their careers and really become leaders 
in the space that's so new, that's so fast growing, um, that that is something that I love. And so that's kind of what drew me to the opportunity. Um, so yeah, um, been here since July, starting up a that's... new community from scratch. It's a uh, it's everything that it always is. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of aligning internally, externally, but it's, it's all in good fun. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I apologize, but I, let's go back uh, because you have yeah. extensive knowledge and community. You, you've worked at a lot of places like Sidecar Technologies, you're a head of community there. Sumo Logic, you're a head of community there. LinkedIn, you're a global head of community there. Financial Flourish, you're director of online community experience and community. That's kind of how that reads. But um, and then now at Invoca, you're director of community and customer marketing. So lots of experience in building, from what I can tell, B two B communities, right? And and just mm -hmm. doing a look. I've known about you for a long time, and I've I've you know kind of kept up with you a little bit, and I was always very like you know, uh, always good things have been said about you and just how you built your communities and how you go in and look at the customer experience and things like that, you know, so just wanted to go backwards and say, you know, thank you so much for coming on Peers Over Beers. It means a lot to me. And I know our audience will appreciate um, kind of what they're going to hear today because of all your experience and, and knowledge of communities. So, so thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we learn from each other, you know. Yeah, that's that's right. We're all and, in this. Yeah. And, and that's why I love having, you know, leaders like yourself on Peers Over Beers, because to be honest, you know, uh, I know that others are going to learn, but I learn a lot. <laughs> so yeah. it helps me uh, to have these conversations and things like that. So, well, you know, that's really cool about Invoca and, and, and the opportunity that you have there. Sounds like, you know, you've done a lot of stuff. So we haven't even really started and tip you know, kind of when you look at back in July, August, you know, when you kind of first started Invoca, and, you know, what are the first things that you go do? What do you, what do you, because I know the things I do, but, you know, I'm interested to hear your point of view. Like you were telling me stuff on the pre-show and I was like, yeah, maybe I should have done that. <laughs> you know, so, so I'd love to hear kind of the first, maybe it's a few months, you know, and what do you start to do? What do you think about? What are you trying to accomplish at the end of the day? Sure. So, well, at Invoca, um, community and customer marketing falls under me. And yeah. so when I came in, we were actually in the thick of planning our um, major user conference that happens wow. once a year. And so, um, unfortunately, the community was not going to be up in time for that last year because, you know, it takes some time to get it up and running, yeah. which I'll get to in a second. But um, it was an awesome opportunity to actually like jump into the deep end and really get to know our customers. Um, so one thing that um, I specifically had to run kind of soup to nuts was our um, award show. Hmm. Um, so we have, um, you know, each year uh, we give awards um, to the best and brightest um, in our category to the most innovative companies. We're using Invoca in interesting ways and uh, the cool results they're seeing. And so um, it was awesome because it gave me an opportunity to get to know like all of these amazing people right out the bat. And the reason I bring it up is because, you know, obviously the show is about community, not customer marketing. But I, I think I there's think that's a lot okay. of, um, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of common ground. And mm -hmm. um, when we're talking Absolutely. about, you know, your, your, kind of your biggest advocates, um, the people really on the cutting edge who are also like willing and able to share their story for the betterment of the community. What you're talking about when you're talking about that group, that's kind of the kernel that you would start your community with anyway, mm. right? So I just had like this really cool accelerant where I just got to know like a lot of people like really well right off the bat um, in, a, in a very fun setting where it's like, hey, You've been nominated for this award. Um, so I, that's I pretty cool. Right? I like, no, I like yeah. that. You, you get to meet the customers yeah. right off. And yeah. so and it starts getting you thinking also of later, you know, when you start that community and you know, how are you going to seek questions? How are you going to get people to talk to each yeah. other? You can, you can call on to those people that nominated for the award and things like that, or maybe people within that yeah. company. 
So, I mean, to me, yeah, because you know, people, great. yeah, the people who win the award are people who are really doing interesting stuff. That's that, that's why they're nominated, that's why the, they're the winner. Um, so you want to kind of um, make sure that you, um, you know, are able to build like a really uh, mutually beneficial relationship with them uh, to where you can continue to provide opportunity for them to um, to have a platform uh, yeah. for their expertise, right? And so community is one of those platforms um, and, and that's fantastic. So what we actually did a few months after that, uh, we got in touch with like uh, 20 or so of our um, kind of, again, our uh, very celebrated um, champions. And we said, hey, we're thinking about this community. Like this is before the vendor was selected. This is before mm. I've kind of had any preconceived notions about what it would be. Be like, hey, can you chat with me for like 15 minutes? We're thinking about this community. Um, what, what would have to be true about this community for you to get value out of it? Right. And so we went and we asked everyone kind of a set of standard questions. Um, but it really helped us to understand like what not just what kind of functionality the community should should have, but also um, in terms of programming, what is actually useful? Mm -hmm. Because the last thing you want to do again, and this goes back to starting out, starting from scratch, you don't know anything. You, you mm -hmm. want to come into it with a beginner mind, even if you've built like tons of communities before like each one is like a fresh new thing it's like a brand new baby um mm -hmm. not going to be like others i mean there's similarities but they, i agree they all have similar yeah they all yeah. have similar elements of course but like you know you you want to try to forget as much as you as much as you can um in terms of like the structure and the the content and the types of things that that you will do in there from a programming perspective and then mm -hmm. just allow the community to lead you because what you don't want to do is like community is not something you do to other people it's something you do with other people and so mm -hmm. the more that you can kind of um get this ground full of people um excited about it talking about it sharing their ideas with you the, the easier it's going to be uh later when you launch what so I like is what I like what you yeah. said though, though, Maria, and, and it's a big buzzword today. It's community led, right? And that's yeah, those 100%. are the things that you're talking about. So, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time, so we already know this. It's not really something new. <laughs> I feel like organizations right. do this, actually do this a lot. You know, I mean, the last thing they want to do is not have it community led. I'm not saying organizations make mistake, don't make mistakes, you know, but for the most part, we've been doing this for years. This is not something new, but I love how you said that though, because that's exactly what you're doing. It's community led. So keep yeah, going. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> you we can't underscore that uh, highly enough, right? Like um, can't can't it's not possible to overstate how important that is. Yeah. So thanks for putting putting a finer point on it. Um so so that's on the customer side, right? So as you're starting up, you wanna try to understand. Uh, who are the customers, first of all, who are excited about the space, yeah. right? Like this is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to do it with people who are actually like excited about the future. There'll be a time to bring laggards onto the thing later, but you want to start with, you know, the art of the possible. Uh, and, and you want to ask people what they would want to see, right? And um, it's, if you can, like try to interview customers who are new, Mm -hmm. as well as customers who are who've been with you for a while because then um you know customers who've been around for a while they're experts they may not remember kind of like what kind of support they needed when they were new yeah um so it's just useful to kind of cover a lot of ground in terms of customers or new customers who are uh, who've been around um the block a few times and just kind of span the gamut you know uh, large companies, Absolutely. small companies, you know, whatever, because you want to make it um, good for, for everyone. You want to solve real needs, right? You Your job yeah. is to understand, like, what is the problem you're solving? You're not just building it just because someone gave you a job and said, build a community. Like, it has to actually solve the need, right? 
Um, okay, so that's the first thing for the sure. customers. The second thing is the work that you're going to do internally. Mm. So obviously, we all have bosses, right? And, <laughs> and every company has an executive team. And so you really want to make your community like really strategic. But how do you make it strategic? You want to understand what's important to the organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you go to like all the all hands, you listen to like, um, you know, the readouts, quarterly readouts that your CFO gives you, uh, the strategy that the CEO talks to. You want to really understand that and internalize it and ask yourself like all the time, is the community I'm building, is the stuff I'm doing actually help that goal? Yep. Um, that was kind of set for the whole company. And if it doesn't, like you really need to kind of uh, readjust a little bit um, so that you are solving problems. Because again, like your company brought you in mm -hmm. um, to help make the company successful or more successful, right? Mm -hmm. To usher into the new stage of growth. How are you going to do that? By solving like the actual, uh, by uh, helping community kind of align to the strategic direction that's been set out that takes you into that next phase of growth, right? Or the next phase of whatever your company is in. Um, so that's really, really important, right? And so you want to be able to always point to how you are solving that big thing um, because that's how you, really you get legitimacy. Um, and, and people are like, oh, wow, this community thing um, is important. It's delivering results. Let's keep funding it. Um, and so, and Maria, um, I'll say so, you can't yeah. stress enough how important it is for your community goals to line up to the company goals. You know, like for example, 100%. you've got your company goals. Like I, I report to the CMO today, right? And so we know that, you know, community for me has always been more of a customer success or a success or a customer mm -hmm. thing. It's not, it, it always will be that, but I think. You know, if you're not solving some of these marketing goals that are actually rolling up into, you know, those main company goals, but the nice thing about community is it can roll up to a lot of different goals, you know, product, customer, uh, we call it customers, like our customer success and support and a bunch of other stuff there, you know, so that's the opportunity, but you, you really need to align it with that. We have a thing called plan on a page. And so you put your plan yep. on a page and everything. Yeah. Everything there just lines up directly with the marketing goals and those goals directly line up to the business goals. If it's not doing that, like you said, you have to think you, you have to do that. Community isn't all about always hanging out with your friends, hanging out with, you know, the community people. And, you know, you are there for a reason and, and the goals are the goals and you've got to accomplish those goals or at least well let those wrap. Yeah. I, I just I see a lot of tactical things that go on in some of these communities. And, you know, it's it's just you know, you got to look at the strategic view of community versus all the tactical things you have to go do. These tactical things are in the roadmap that you can push to drive to that strategic vision and goal and everything else, but you hit it right. And I love how you said it. So that's why I just wanted to push that, you know, uh, to say thank you for saying that. And I agree. So sure. good stuff. Sure. Yeah. So um, I am on the marketing team, actually, but uh, I'm very lucky um, to have two uh, executive sponsors. So uh, obviously our CMO, who was my um, my old boss from a long time ago, again, um, who, whom I absolutely adore. Um, she is one of my executive sponsors and awesome. our head of customer success, um, chief customer officer is uh, someone we know together in common. Uh, yeah. She's my other um, She's executive awesome. sponsor. And so... She is so awesome. So I, not only do I have two um, amazing executive sponsors in two different departments, yep, yep. Uh, but they're also like both amazing and they're both um, uh, such accomplished uh, women leaders. And that's always, love it. that's always great. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm really lucky in that I have two. So it helps me make sure that I am aligning this community to meet the needs of like as many of these important stakeholders as possible. And so um, what I did, um, and I've always done this in the past companies, but I feel like this time I kind of did it in a more um, kind of prescriptive way, if you would. Mm -hmm. um, I assembled a steering committee. So apart from the two executive sponsors, 
um, I leveraged, um, I started to build relationships with um, exec- key executive stakeholders across the company um, that whom community um, either would affect, impact somehow, or um, who whose lives I could potentially improve. Yeah. Right, um, meaning their their departments uh, deliverables, or from whom, um, uh, like we would need to partner with. So, right, like so, an executive like in charge of IT, for example, like we we're gonna need system mm-hmm. help, right? Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that what we're building is like technically sound, um, and actually is good for kind of our technology stack, right? So, like all these different groups, they have to be. Um, consulted, they have to be brought into the fold, and they have to be um, kept abreast. Um, and you want to take their input as well. Um, and by having like this extremely cross-functional team um, working with me on the strategy, like before I even like talk to any vendors, right? This allowed me to ensure that I don't have that I'm not operating with any um, blind spots. Right, because I sit where I sit. I'm in marketing. That's where kind of my world revolves around. But like, I try to know a lot about a lot, but like, you're just not going to know everything, right? Mm -hmm. And like, no matter how many Slack channels you're in, um, (laughs) there's no one that can speak to kind of the big picture of the department than the person who's in charge of the department, right? And that person can actually steer you like once you kind of get through the strategy ideation, (laughs) <laughs> that person can actually steer you to the right people on their team to help you get it done. And so it's really, really important for a number of reasons. It, it helps uh, people understand your vision. It helps people contribute to your vision. It helps you not have the blind spots and it helps you uh, build really solid relationships like outside of your department um, and um, helps like other people get really excited about it. So that, yep. you know, I mean, I'm a team of two. Um, sometimes you're a team of one. And so you're going to mm-hmm. need like all the resources that you can get. And so the That's ability right. to manage cross-functionally and <laughs> to beg, borrow and steal across the organization mm-hmm. <laughs> um, is basically like what a good community leader has to be able to do. Um, You've got to be able to influence. Value. That's the, I think you have to be able to influence. You know, and getting those people uh, I, excited. And yeah. like you said, I think that's, it's exactly what I do is, um, you know, when I go into the organization, the first thing is, is I just start talking to people, talking to leaders, talking to just people I know that are really smart in the organization that aren't leaders, but yeah. I got to go find those people because they're the ones going to be helping to do whatever programs that we do for us as a webinar program, or I call it the community show. You know, they're really smart about the products, so they're going to do that stuff, but I got to talk to their leaders to let them know that they're going to be doing that stuff at some point, you know, and, you know, so you're right, yeah. aligning all those things together, your goals and what you can accomplish, getting those leaders excited and just letting them know, hey, just, you know, I'll be probably being in your department and they'll probably help me do a bunch of stuff like answering questions, helping write blogs, helping to, you know, whatever, you know, be on the webinars and lead some of that stuff because it's an opportunity for them. Yeah. And that's the way I present it is the opportunity to really um, evangelize yourself or promote yourself. I'm here to do that for you. But, you know, the way we do it is through community. And, you know, when you when you author a blog, when you actually are the speaker on a webinar, when you answer those questions, your name's out there now. You know, you're on video for good, you know, and, and you're on those blogs for good. And, you know, now you can put that if you want on your resume and all that kind of stuff. And that's how I do it, you know, and, and I think that people get excited about it. Not everybody, you know, like we know, everybody's different on how they want to engage with different things, whether it's community or in life and things like that. So you have to build what, you know, these programs that allow even employees to engage in your community with your customers and for us, our partners too. So love that. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we sat together as the steering committee team and we aligned, you know, again, when you're talking to executives, you're not going to get in the weeds. You're not going to get into mm-hmm. your program management. You're going to keep it really high level. Uh, right. And we um, used a few, a few of our sessions together to really align on the key priorities for community. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were able to um, prioritize uh, them against each other. 
and um, to come up with how we're going to measure success. Because that's really, really important because that is your like accountability. That. And so you want to be able to report back to the same um, steering committee, you know, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 24 months after uh, mm-hmm. you're alive. But like how you did against these things um, that you said you were going to do. Your CFO, right? If you're, uh, you're probably spending a chunk of money on these, pla- these platforms, you know, they're yep. not cheap. And so uh, your CFO is like, hey, I gave you all this money. Like, mm-hmm. um, what what happened as a result? So you want to have those answers. Um, so how you're going to measure it is actually really important. And that's going to play in hugely into uh, your vendor selection. So hold that thought for a minute. I'll, I'll circle back to that in a, in a few minutes. Okay. So because we created the strategy together as a team, And because, you know, um, the things that we said the community was going to do are so um, bold and kind of cross-functionally aligned and aligned to our big goal as a company, people are, like, excited about it, right? They are more willing to then, after you kind of did this collaborative strategy, um, if you ever need resources to support this thing, that they are excited about, that they've participated in, um, they are more willing um, to give you some resources. So uh, we had a situation where um, we needed an engineer for the implementation team. Um, This is, you know, fast forwarding a little bit after we selected the vendor um, and we ended up losing that engineer. And so we had to quickly you know, cover our bases. And we were able to do that because we built um, a good relationship with kind of the product and engineering side of the house. Like everybody was kind of connected uh, into why is this important? So, um, and again, the kind of repeating the value that this is going to bring to our customers and to the company, you can never do that too much because then right. people are, you know, are like, what am I working on? Why, why, why did you put me on this project? It's important, um, and you can't do it. Um, it's impossible to overdo it, right? So you want to keep uh, reiterating the value and getting people excited. Um, it it's, contributes to the. It's it's ongoing, like it's ongoing. I think, yeah, I think that you know, and one of the things that I've done over this last year, and I even did it at the last company, is anytime there's a a, a time to speak in front of the entire company, which I get to do that every yeah. six weeks or. So there's three different places that now I can speak. One is maybe four, but one is in an all hands meeting once every six weeks, which anybody can come on. Usually there's maybe two or 300, not three, about 200 people on. So most of the time the executives are on. Two is when, and we have these things called, they're operating mechanisms called rocks. So there are relative operating committees. And, and so we have an executive level rock. And so I get to, talk every six weeks, seven weeks on that. And then every six or seven weeks on, you know, the uh, uh, the all hands, which is just an HR thing. And then we have these sub rock type things, you know, I'm on a partner sub rock and looking at maybe a sales kind of thing. The, the opportunity to do that and get in front of those leaders and show the value that you're bringing with your community and, and getting in front of them as much as possible, especially after the fact, that it, that it goes live, which I know you already know all this stuff, but you know, putting yourself like what not so long ago, the HR person, hey Chris, in two days I need somebody to speak about something. Can you please speak about community? And I'm like, all right, I only got two days. Okay, fine, I'll figure it out, right? You know, so yeah, take every opportunity you can. There's, um, you know, you you need to constantly be marketing to your mm-hmm. customers but you also have to market internally Absolutely. just as much, if not more, right? Your internal employees is what really powers your community work. So without that, you don't really have anything. Uh, okay, so we have the steering committee. We aligned on a strategy. We know what we're measuring, stuff like that. And then um, that's when you can start getting into like understanding what is the functionality that your community it's going to have. And the cool thing is that you mm-hmm. put together your strategy. So your feature set just kind of should like flow out of that. Um, so 
it sounds like a lot of work and you actually end up spending like, you know, quite a bit of time, right, on this kind of initial setup yeah. without you ever like talking about any features. Um, but that is time so well spent. Like my favorite proverb is um, like, I can go fast, alone. you can go fast alone, but you can go further together. So it's mm -hmm. always worth your time to slow down. You don't need to rush into anything, even though you may feel the urgency to like start proving yourself. It's always worth your while to slow down, figure out why, figure out who, and like how to um, position it in a way that it's the most impactful. I like uh, the Go slow to go fast, you know. Um, you go slow to go fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah but absolutely. like, you know, like we spent a few months on that, right? Like yeah. before anyone stepped into any kind of implementation. So then because I knew what I was doing, um, <laughs> like what in general terms this community had to deliver, it was kind of easier to go from there to a feature set. Then you start talking to vendors. Then you kind of narrow down this pool of vendors that you've talked to. Um, and then, you know, then you can actually start selecting a vendor based on the features that would allow you to reach those big goals. But also, you want to always understand, like, how, if you're going to be able to measure what you said you were going to measure. This yeah. is why I was like, hey, we'll circle back around to this in a few minutes. So here we are, right? That is a critical part of vendor selection. You need to understand what does data look like, mm -hmm. um, who, who can take data out, where you can take the data to, um, how is it logged, where is it logged, um, how easy or hard is it to take out into like whatever BI system you have, mm -hmm. like a Tableau and whatnot. Um, and so you want to kind of get ahead of that, right? Um, because the last thing you want to do is have a community that's up and running, it's wonderful, but you don't actually know how to measure it um, and you can't actually get to those things that you said you were going to measure because you didn't do your homework. So I'm not saying it's the only basis on which to select your platform, but it's one of the many things to think through. It's, I think it's so a big one, thing, Maria. And, it's a big and I think, thing. Yeah. you know, it, it, look, there's a lot of things to look at, but, you know, at the end of the day, you got to prove value and you got to understand, well, yeah. all right, yeah. you, you've, you went to your executives and said, this is the value that we're going to bring. And then you need a vendor to allow you to show that as best as possible. I'm not saying you're not going to have to get, you know, Google Analytics and, you know, the. so there's probably a few places that you'll get your data. But like you said, how easy or how can you move that data over into like a Power BI or Tableau or, or whatever to allow you yeah. to make that data pretty, you know, and make it yeah. digestible and and that it's and helping to accomplish to your goals. It. Well, anyone, yeah. to, I like that a lot. And, and, and yeah. I can probably learn from you on that piece because you know, allowing people to use it is, would be amazing. So if it was somebody in customer success and, and it was case deflection or for somebody in marketing that, you know, uh, maybe we got a new lead or maybe we got a new uh, something, you know, that just going to help sales and that kind of stuff and proving that out, you know, and instead of you having, you have to teach and, you know, learn, teach, learn, learn kind of thing, right? You learn it, you teach it, you learn it, you know, that kind of stuff. And, but once these other organizations can see it and learn it and understand it, they start using that stuff. That's powerful. Yeah. You do that. I love that. Yeah. Wow. And this is why you want to involve, you know, via the uh, kind of executive work, whoever's in charge of your systems is a really important partner because that's where you start to understand like, mm. oh, we standardize everything on Power BI or Tableau. Like you wouldn't know this if you just went into like this vendor selection process yeah. by yourself. That's but like right. this allows you to ask like really smart questions um, that allow you to actually vet it mm -hmm. against, not just against other vendors, but like also in support of your own um, data strategy as a company, right? Yeah, so, that's good. Good again, stuff, really yeah. happy I like um, got to know um, our data team and kind of how things work well before I signed any contracts with any vendors. Anyway, no. so this actually is a nice pivot into the next point. So just like I had the executive team, uh, the executive steering committee kind of aligning on the strategy, uh, I assembled a like a technology council uh, mm -hmm. to help me vet these like we 
uh, you know, picked our top three. And we're like, hey, I want like all the smart technical people on my organization to vet these three choices from a technical perspective, right? Like, again, like you want to vet it from a feature perspective, right? If like, let's say, you know, you're uh, running product and you want customer feedback, right? You want to take a look at um, kind of how the feedback actually happens with customers, yeah. right? But also uh, you want to bring in people who kind of hold the different parts of your tech stock in their, in their hands operationally um, and understand how everything is going to fit together. Your platform is going to fit with whatever you use for CRM, more than likely Salesforce, Gainsight, right? Like what are all the different tools um, that intersect and that your community should maybe at least not initially, but at some point should um, integrate with or take data from or put data into, right? And so um, so on the team was like uh, our head of marketing ops, the head of customer success ops, uh, Salesforce, de Salesforce, de Salesforce developers. Again, uh, my partner who manages our entire um, technology team um, and you just want to have like all these different representatives um, to uh, to to help you vet and and ask good questions because they have some questions too right so you want to yeah. have these like uh, sessions for the whole team where they can ask questions directly to the vendor so then you kind of from there I went and I filled out um, scorecards for each of the three vendors um, actually, um, uh, there, there are a few, um, out on the web. My favorite one is probably from my friends that, um, in before the lock, um, they have a great, uh, template, which I literally went and I copied it, copied it. Like it literally says, <laughs> go in and copy and make your <laughs> own. And that's what I did. But the beauty of specifically that, um, um, that um, template is that it helps you kind of think through things holistically, yeah. right? Like it helps you think of the vendor's kind of strengths as you see them. And also like, what does the vendor think their strengths are? Mm -hmm. And then it also allowed me to kind of extrapolate a little bit on that thinking, uh, understand like, you know, where the vendor is going in the future, right? Because you do the scorecard on the features that again, are aligned to your strategy, right? Yeah. Like which one just delivers better on the functionality? Oh, kind of roughly the same, um, you know, give or take a few. Uh, they're very, like everyone's gonna have like questions and That's answers right. and yeah. ideas, right? But like they yeah. do things in a, in a, sometimes in a pretty vastly different way, right? Mm -hmm. um, data is different, integrations are different, That's right. but like, at its core, you have conversations, you have groups, you know. Yeah, most of them do that. But, but, anyway, but I think you had hit yeah. a point on, and, and I think integrations are a big thing, right? Yeah. So, it's you know, like, like, for example, ideation. You know, if a vendor, like most of these um, vendors have ideas, but not all vendors will integrate into like Jira and, and then write back, to, right. you know, write into Jira and, and Jira writing back to the community ideation platform. So I'm, I say that because, you know, the way that PMs work on a daily basis is through Jira yeah. or something like that, yeah. right? Like they don't go to other places. They don't want to go anywhere else. They want to put their information right. right there in Jira and they hit send or save. And then that should go back directly, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's like, you know, a lot of times it's good because when you start when you start competing with you know things like aha and and you know because aha is an only an ideation platform right so if your vendor can't do the basics like that i'm not saying yeah. it has to be as good as aha but it has to do the basics like i just said you know and and if it yeah. doesn't then you know so this is just one example of you know i know that like right you know, some vendors, uh, community vendors do a very good job and they get the, the technology market, right? Like that, that's, but not everyone does like the vendor over here. Yes, they have Q&A, they have blogs, they have these things, but their integration strategy and other business systems like Salesforce or, you know, Jira or any other system is not that it can't be done, but it's very difficult. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, 
I think that's key, you know, especially for yeah. a B2B and company not like every, ours. Yeah, and not every like Salesforce integration is the same either. <laughs> exactly. Right? Some have a, a managed package, some have an unmanaged package, some integrate via API. Like these yeah. all have like serious pros and cons. So this is that's why right. you need to have your technical steering team to help vet like, hey, how do we feel about this? Type of innovation, how we feel. Yep. Anyway, so I did the scorecards um, based on feature and functionality, but also it allowed me to like interview each vendor and be like, so what are you excited about in the future? Uh, tell me a little bit about your roadmap. Where do you see community in five years? And also like, um, this is kind of not obvious, but you want to make sure that whatever vendor you're selecting um, is going to be around for a while because uh, <laughs> Community migration, as anyone who's gone through mm. migration can tell you, it is not something you want to do. Migration sucks. Yep. Uh, it is disruptive to your customers. <laughs> you lose data. People hate it. Um, yeah, something always goes wrong. It's expensive. It's time yep. consuming uh, in terms of money, in terms of resources. Like it is a mess. So what you are trying to manage to is longevity. Yeah. Uh, you want a part, a community partner. You want to do this once, Maria. You don't want to, you know, if you're going to stay at the company yeah. for five years, you want that vendor to be with you for five years or however long, you know, because the last thing you want to do is and go. It, you want it to outlive out. you too, yeah, right? Absolutely. Like after you leave, like the next yep. person that takes over, it's like, wow, this is so great. It's so organized. I yep. I can just grow this thing, right? I don't have to worry about and the partner people. piece. And, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And so you want to make sure, like, as much as possible, you want to try to understand their, like, just their longevity, how long they've been around, how well funded they are, what yep. their customers are, right? Like, if they just have like a ton of really great customers, they're probably making enough money. But like, yep. you know, keep uh, crunch base or whatever. Try to understand how much money they've raised. Um, and so these questions um, do end up coming up, like when you're talking um, to your steering committee about the recommendation you're making, uh, you want to make sure that they feel comfortable with not just like who can do the job, but like, is this company a risky company? Yeah. Right. And so you want to help people feel good about the choice you're making. So what we did uh, with, the te um, with the technology team, you know, I did the scorecards, I convened everyone together after we did the three demos with the vendors and we had a debrief and I just had everyone we were lucky that we were in vehement agreement yeah. um you're not always going to have that um but you know it just shows that like because we were all kind of aligned on the vision and like I chose three good companies that they could all really support that vision but in different yeah. ways so we were able um to really kind of agree on our top one and two choices and I took those recommendations back to the steering committee. And then we just kind of grilled the data together um, as a executive team to come up with like the choice that we made. Right. And so all those things went into consideration. Like, again, we went back to the strategy. We we're like, Hey, you know, this tool, even, even though it's more expensive, it actually addresses uh, like some of our self-service goals, like a yeah. lot better than those other tools. So like, people actually felt more comfortable with a more expensive tool because it more holistically uh, solved for what we were trying to solve too. Good thing we had that strategy. We knew what we were, uh, what problems we were actually solving, right? So it all kind of, again, it all is circular. <laughs> you kind of end up back where you started. And if you started from a solid place, like it all kind of just flows through that. Uh, but, you know, it's an intensive process. It is, it is a lot of alignment, a lot of um, selling, right? A lot of painting of a vision when you don't even have a pixel on a page at that point. <laughs> um, and That's just, right. you know, effective communication and effective leadership. That I is judge. all you're doing yeah. for the first, like, three months, at least. At least. No, I think you're right. Your job changes once you know you start getting kind of you start looking at how you're going to seed your community who's going to be on the community and you know once that starts it's, it's you know you'll start 
promoting out, you know, the numbers where you're heading, you still want to get that executive alignment, all that stuff. Or yeah, but 100%. it's a, it's basically a different job. Your first three or four months are way different than the rest of your career. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. Uh, but but I think they're crucial to to what you have to go do to um, sell the value, sell the you know do everything you just said, and and you know. You did it just like a pro, you know, you've done it before, I know, but, you know, this is exactly, I think what our audience needs to hear is it's been really good. Um, now what's, so Thank now you. the vendor selection uh, is done, you already selected somebody, um, what's next? Well, next is the implementation. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously there's contract negotiation. So again, you want to partner yeah, with yeah. somebody internally to help you um, come to the best terms Absolutely that agree. you can get. Um, you have to also understand like, you know, you want everyone to be happy with the deal. You want definitely favorable terms, but you also want your vendor, because again, they're a partner. You want right. to be in business with them for at least five years. So you want them to be happy. You don't want them to discount it so much that they're not making a profit. So you just, you know, it takes, a little bit of dancing, um, but mm -hmm. you know, you you end up with a deal. Everyone signs on the dotted line, um, and then you you can start the implementation project. And so, you know, depending on how big and complex the platform is, and how many of these integrations you need to do, it may take a little bit. It may take a long time. The implementation we're doing now is a little bit on the more complex side. Mm. Um, so we. We also have a migration, um, so oh, you, did. Um, I didn't, you know, okay. it takes some time. Yeah, just stuff content, just like knowledge oh, articles, got it. not yep. even like uh, questions and answers, because that's 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 much harder to migrate. And even like this content migration is is it just makes the project like a lot more complex. So just hmm. to underscore the point about migration, you want to use them sparingly, if ever. Um, anyway, so. Um, that's where we are. You know, we're in the migration process, but while you're, sorry, the implementation process, but while you're in the implementation process, what are you planning? You're always planning your next thing, right? What is the next thing? Launch, sure. right? Yeah. So, you know, launch all the elements. I've already started making my rounds with every one of the companies who's going to participate in the launch. Again, you want, you never want to bring, especially something this big to people at the last minute. You want to try to pad as much as possible and people will really appreciate you for doing that you know i have to tell you a little story because so, i think you know uh you hit it right there i think you got to create that buzz in the very beginning and you got to continue continue to maintain that over time but the, the the buzz that you create today uh like example i created so much buzz in april of last year so we've been we'll be live a year from on april 28th and when I go look at the numbers, just the amount of people that clicked on the community, right? Well, you know, the number of users and things like that for the first two months was way higher than the next mm. six months. Why? Because yeah. one is that first day, first, let's say two weeks, because I did kind of a soft launch and then I kind of then opened it up and then had a bunch of people started to, but there's so many people coming on, both employees some customers and partners. I mean, it was crazy. Like, you know, uh, and and so f then it kept, the numbers went down, which I knew they would because because you want to start seeing you know because the things that I did one of my how do you get traffic to your site well, well you can't always just email a bunch of people that's one way you know but you have to use the different channels like for our for us realtio.com support.realtio.com docs.realtio.com inside the product and all these other places how people know who you are yeah. and where you are you know that kind of stuff. That's another thing you have to think about is how do you get on these digital sites? Yep. How do you, you know, it's, it's not always easy to do that, right? But so that's yep. how we're getting our trap today. And now SEO is starting to be a big play starting. It started, but, you know, our SEO numbers are like this. And I'm showing that in the next meeting is, you know, the way we're going to get traffic, 80% of our traffic in the next three years will be from SEO. 80, yep. so close to 80, right? Wow. Right, right now, it'd be close. Maybe it'd be 60 to 80, you know, but eventually, you know, that's how, that's how these things work. Right. You know, it's people are searching for yep. questions. People are, you know, and so 
Um, today, we're probably only at 25, 27%. So just think, the beauty is yeah. so much more to go. It's going to be awesome, you know, and, but, um, but it's kind of cool to kind of look at that first launch and the excitement that you can bring to the organization because it'll be all over the place, you know, coming in and, you know, the, the challenge is trying to maintain it. You know, sometimes you have to let off the gas to see, you know, if a question is not being answered by an employee or something like that, it's okay. Let's let's see if anybody else answers it. You know, so there's a lot of things you have to think about, you know, to, yes, you want to answer quickly, but you also want to give other people opportunity to do it because then they'll just expect us to do it the whole time. You know what I mean? So it's a fine yeah. line balance and everything else. So, but yeah, so yours is launch and probably seating and getting people you know, to come, come in first day or two or whatever, you know, I did it for two weeks. Like yeah. I had seed questions for two weeks for two days a week or two days, twice a day for two weeks, I would have posts and then I would send out emails directly to customers, you know, and partners to say, Hey, we're open, blah, blah, blah. And then more content going out. I had a blog every single week basically even to this day, every single week, I have some kind of content blog that is solving some kind of problem. Boom, 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 you know? And so you've got to now start thinking about your content strategy, your engagement strategy, and the, yeah. the roadmap to drive all those things, which I assume you probably have a lot of that, right? So getting there anyways. Yeah, this is, this is uh, you know, while you're implement, in implementation, this That's is right. the time to start mapping out your content strategy, uh, like we'll also have a content working group to help uh, figure out like what what is the content that we have, what is the content that we need to create, who's going to create it, yeah. um, and which um, we I mean I'm so lucky that I have such smart people around me in the organization, but like who like really understand learning, yeah. so we can like geek out and figure out like what are the learning personas, right? <laughs> like who is the learner? What do they need to learn? What do we need them to learn? And kind of having kind of that organized um, way of thinking about it. So it's not just random, <laughs> just randomly putting things, but like, as you get going, uh, yeah. the questions people ask and uh, don't forget to look at your search analytics too, like in the community, what are people searching yes. and getting answers to versus not getting answers, those content gaps, are actually really telling like that is a place to Absolutely. start creating content if someone's looking for something not finding it start there people are asking questions you start to see these trends and so then it just kind of becomes a flywheel right like the more stuff is in there the more people are searching and asking the more informed your content roadmap can become yeah. but again like I think it, uh, it also internally promote it internally. Don't forget to talk to people internally, like all the time yeah. to understand what they need from a content perspective. I think that, you know, over time, you know, I'll give a perfect example because that stuff, it, it's a very good point is when you start looking at your search analytics, you know, in the back end, it takes a little time, you know, people to search and things like that. But then once they do, you start seeing a lot of trends. Like one of our things was, yeah. um, uh, on community, and, and I'll say this last thing, but um, one of the search words was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, the search word kept coming up over and over and over. And I thought, we don't have any content around the search word. Why? You know, this is crazy. And so I started creating was webinars it around it. No, no, it was just different oh, people okay. searching for that. Every single month, it was the highest rated search. And yeah, you can go see who it was. And uh, so I started creating content. You know, I started looking at webinars and then I started creating blogs and I captured that Q&A that were on the webinars, pushed it out on the community. And now we have a ton of content just on that topic, you know, so that, you know, it, it was just so much really good stuff to come out of it. You know what I mean? So, but, so Maria, this was really, really good. Thank you for coming on. It's always such a pleasure chatting and I really learned uh, from you as well, like how you're approaching similar problems and um, where I like how we're thinking about things in a similar way, but like we also think very similar. In, them in a different, in a different fashion, right? Because our communities are different. Our users need different things from us. And so always, always a pleasure to chat to another uh, professional. 
Well, Maria, thank you for coming on Peers Over Beers. I'm Chris Denzel and Maria Ognova. Yes, find perfect. Me on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I'll push um, all that. Our awesome, Go ahead. Sorry. Our awesome friend Brian Oblinger um, created a link that's a shortcut to my LinkedIn. Uh, and I think it's called everyone knows Maria.com. <laughs> Oh my God! I, I'll have to find and that one for he, sure. He reminds right. me of it like every time I see him. So if you go to that, it actually links to my LinkedIn. So that's one name. That's one way to find me. But yeah, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Um, and I am so excited to get a chance to chat with you, Chris. And looking forward to connecting to all of you on LinkedIn. All right. Thanks, Maria.